Ladies and gentlemen, this is this disease is deadlier than the plague. But it's not because it's a nutshell. White death. I'm. Uh, I think it's TB, right? Tuberc. I'm pretty sure it's TB. Tuberculosis. I'm pretty sure it's that white death. Yeah. So that is uh, consumption, as it's known in I guess England and places, right? James May has talked about that many times, uh, implying his age is like older than the Victorian times. But uh, TB is like interesting, right? With very, uh, you know, like historical thing behind it. Like, I don't know, like, uh, you know, like vampires and things like that. Then New England, uh, you know, epidemic or whatever that was, that like people was like driving stake through, uh, you know, like dead bodies hard, thinking they might be like vampires and things, right? That's TB related. So, yeah, TB is like, even in today's world, it's like one of those things, which is like, People don't worry about it that much, but it's still around and it's still deadly, right? If you have TB, like this, concerning, right? One of those type of thing. So it's going to be interesting. This is my channel, Kuzgaz in a nutshell. Kuzgaz is a great channel, talking about many different topics. I like whenever, uh, you know, he talks about biological things, which is, I like physics and anything f around physics, basically. Uh, so when it comes to, like, biology and things, you know, like, I'm usually not on up to date. So this is going to be a really interesting video. Let's go this one. Hi, Steve here. Today, I'm moving over as the voice of Kurzgesagt for something really special. Our dearest friend John Green would like to tell you a story that's very close to his heart. So, let's hear it from him directly. Hey, John. Hey, Steve. Thanks so much. Let's dive right in. The White Death has haunted humanity like no other disease, following us for thousands, maybe millions of years. It was there when we tamed fire, invented culture, and ventured out of Africa to conquer the world. In 1815, it caused one in four deaths in Britain. In the last 200 years, it killed a billion people way more than all wars and natural disasters combined. Even today, it's the infectious disease with the highest kill count, but do you even know what we are talking about? We're talking about Mycobacterium tuberculosis, which causes tuberculosis, or TB, our original arch enemy. Right now, one in four humans alive are infected with the bacterium, you may be one of them. So, how is it possible that we never hear about TB? Wait what? a minute, one in four? Feels like much higher than it is. So, are you telling me one in four people like... So, if I see like, you know, like many people on right, like many of them also has TB, how is that possible, right? Because I always assume TB is like this deadly disease that if you have it, first of all, you're gonna cough like hell, you're gonna cough up blood. I'm guessing there are stages, obviously, but one in four feels like a lot. I didn't know that one, which is also scary now. <laughs> like, okay, people I know probably is going to have one, but okay. Well, the White Death is the perfect human predator. Very infectious, but very quiet most of the time. Careful not to murder recklessly. Perfectly adapted to your immune system and just physically incredibly hard to kill. What exactly makes it so powerful? The perfect human predator. Usually, the bacterium enters your body through the airways and sets up home in the lungs, a giant living cave system defended by billions of macrophages, powerful guard cells that hunt and kill intruders. The TB bug is quickly attacked and devoured alive. Unfortunately, this is its plan. The White Death is the worst kind of parasite, an immune system parasite. Macrophages grab their victims, trap them inside a phagosome, and flood it with acid that rips them to pieces. But TB evolved a thick, waxy coat that makes it completely immune to those acids. Worse, it captures and modifies the macrophage to be a perfect host. Like a tiny vampire, the parasite slowly consumes the cell, TB then replicates extremely slowly. Other microbes that make you sick multiply up to 60 times faster, exploding their numbers before the immune system can eradicate them. But the White Death is so well adapted to you, it has already won by being here. No need to rush things. When its host cell is sucked dry and dies, the bacteria infect new macrophages. Although these bacteria are stealthy, the decaying corpses they leave behind do activate a proper immune response. 
your body knows something is up and mobilizes its forces. But once again, this is part of the plan. Macrophages and many other immune cells try to kill the bacteria, but that thick cell wall makes them a formidable fortress and resistant to many attacks. And it infects its attackers in the process. So when your cells can't oh, kill what the them... So you telling me that uh, TB has this kind of a layer around it that makes it like harder for our immune system to fight back. That is very specific. So when he said like uh, this disease might be here for millions of years, it makes sense. Only then it can evolve into something like this, right? And the slow thing, that's also problematic for us because uh, our immune system goes haywire. But if, if something stays a long time there and starts to in a way attack itself, right? Because it tried to attack in a large numbers, right? Uh, psycho bombing, let's just say everything, basically creating some kind of a self-harm. So the longer it stays in the system, the longer problem, you know, like rises and obviously multiplies in that way. They do the next best thing, keep the parasites from escaping. A granuloma is formed, a sort of white blob. In the center is a core of infected and dead macrophages, a pleasant home and food for the bacterium. Other immune cells surround this sphere of death to contain it, creating a safe space where TB can sit for years. Worse, it is perfectly protected from medication and releases chemicals that make it hard for your heavy immune weapons to be activated. This is the stalemate version of tuberculosis. The infection is sleeping and the bacteria is doing its thing. This is going on right now in up to 2 billion people. But in 1 in 10 of them, the disease will become active. Active tuberculosis is an emergency, but again, a slow one. If your immune system can't contain the infection anymore, granulomas burst. Suddenly, your lungs are filled with macrophage corpses and fresh bacteria. Your immune system panics and overreacts. Hordes of soldiers leave your blood and rush to the infected areas. They order inflammation and fluids flood into your lungs. But unfortunately, your lungs are not made to be a battlefield. In their panic, your immune cells don't... Basically, inflammation is a problem because it's, it's part of the defense. Basically, if I were to say, like, if, if you're, like, a well-run city and you have to, like, shut down a lot of, like, facilities and, like, factories and things for whatever reason, at the local level, that is important to, like, you know, save that factory or something. But the whole scene, like, your city is slowly shutting down, right? Because key, key parts and key facilities are getting shut down. So inflammation is a problem like that. Our body is, like, constantly active. And if inflammation rises, that starts to shut down, uh, you know, like really key points, like shut down the oxygen to certain, you know, organs and things. It becomes a problem, right? That is one of the most, uh, most prescribed drug out there is anti-inflammatory drugs, right? NSAIDs, basically. That is one of the most common ones because inflammation is your, becomes your biggest enemy because that is your defense system. It's just like it just overloads care. They're running around with flamethrowers trying to purge the infection, but causing terrible damage. As fluids and dead tissue amass, it becomes difficult to breathe, and you begin coughing hard, sometimes even coughing up blood. And again, this is part of the plan, because now you spread millions of bacteria catching rides in tiny droplets. You burn a high fever and lose weight as your body is severely stressed. You turn into a ghost version of yourself. Even if you are treated, this phase can last weeks to months and is very serious. Insufficiently treated, TB will over months, years, or even decades slowly overtake your body. Especially for children or those already weakened, this can be too much and the disease wins the war. The bacterium spreads to other organs, lung function breaks down, and the patient dies. 1.3 million people died this way in 2023 alone. The worst kind of problem. Yeah, see, the problem with the COVID was basically with the vaccines was that things like this kind of accelerated because not everybody know what's their problem. Not everybody are keen to run to hospital. So some of the people had certain diseases like this with weakened immune system. They didn't know that. But they still took the vaccine and things like that, which could be problematic, right? If you're like immune system is not decent, strong enough. So a lot of people caught problem like that. And obviously then it made to like podcast Joe Rogan and shit. And then like, you know, misinformation spread from that. Like, okay, vaccine is doing this, vaccine is doing that type of shit. 
Tuberculosis is the worst kind of problem, a slow one. Instead of killing millions quickly, like COVID, scaring a panicked humanity into frantic action, TB is a smoldering fire, killing too slowly for our short attention span. The symptoms are often mild for many months, so you don't feel in danger. Tuberculosis doesn't want to kill you, of course. It wants to stay alive and spread. And to do this, it exploits human behavior. The people you are most likely to infect are your family and friends, co-workers, or neighbors, the people you spend a lot of time with. When COVID brought the world to a halt, the average patient infected two to three people. An active TB patient infects five to 15 people in a year. Most people catch it via breathing tiny droplets from a cough or sneeze. This is especially common in crowded, poorly ventilated housing or workplaces, which is why TB exploded during the Industrial Revolution. And indeed, wherever we see new unplanned and overcrowded urbanization, from Lagos to St. Petersburg, we tend to see a rise of the white death. Yeah, the, not only that, it rose up during that time because Industrial Revolution was like one of the most horrible uh, living conditions all around, right? Because it was... It's all about industry at that point. People didn't care about human and human. There was no human resources, let's just say. So that weakened people's immune system as well by a large number. Just simple as catching cold was too much for some people. And at that time, when you have something like TB, I mean, like that's, come on. Death alongside it. Today, most cases of active tuberculosis, the version that spreads the disease further, can be cured with a four-month regimen of four different antibiotics. But if that's the case, how is this still the deadliest infectious disease on Earth? Between 1940 and 1965, humans developed several drugs to fight TB, finally making it curable. It was a true achievement of human ingenuity, but we didn't do a great job of distributing the cure. While tuberculosis is almost extinct in much of Europe, the US, and the Middle East, it is still a very real threat in most of the world. TB kills people primarily in Africa, South America, and Asia. In 2022, two-thirds of all TB cases were in just six countries, India, China, Indonesia, the Philippines, Pakistan, and Nigeria. Almost half of all tuberculosis deaths happened in Southeast Asia. But as it is a slow problem like climate change, it was ignored instead of fought aggressively, which enabled more and more strains of TB to develop antibiotic resistance, which is a problem because we kind of stopped making new drugs. In the first 25 years of the antibiotic era, we developed eight different classes of drugs to treat TB. And then, in the 47 years between 1965 and 2012, we developed none. Developing new drugs is extremely expensive, and there was no concentrated effort to eradicate TB, and there simply wasn't enough profit incentive. There is a vaccine. Yeah, I was about to say that the last part, like, there's no profit. Why eradicate it when you can profit from it? Too many documentaries about that is already there, like why certain drug companies do this. But it's over 100 years old and not particularly effective. But beginning in 2012, we did finally develop two new classes of drugs that treat TB. And we may finally be at an inflection point again as better vaccines are on the horizon. Companies that made COVID tests also developed a quick test for TB. So we now have a real opportunity to push this disease back until it dies forever. But only if we get enough people to know about TB, like you do now, and to care about it. A century ago, in the United States, there were almost as many hospital beds for TB patients as for treating all other illnesses and injuries combined. The White Death was a leading cause of death in the US, and then one day, it just wasn't anymore. And we can do this again. 4,000 people died of tuberculosis yesterday. And we simply don't have to accept a world where so many of us still die of a disease we know how to cure. The White Death has been... I mean, look, if it's like mostly in Asia, basically India and China and also Pakistan and places like that. But I mean, it's just based on statistics. First of all, India and China, like that's your like, what, near 3 billion people right there. 
that's a statistic but india and china has to recognize this and like step up right okay let's eradicate this but as far as i'm living here in india i don't remember many people that i know of like even one i'm getting i'm pretty sure i don't know any of people that died or like even got really damaged by tb then again i'm living in like one of the major cities maybe it's happening in like uh, you know like villages and areas like that who knows but yeah just my statistic is going to be higher but india and china has to like recognize this and step up on that point with us for millions of years it is time to continue our journey without it If you want to learn more about tuberculosis and the folks working to fight it through clinical trials and care delivery, and also learn how you can help, check out the organization Partners in Health at pih.org slash programs slash tuberculosis. We've put a link in the description for you. Also, if this wasn't enough TB for you, there's a crash course lecture on the history and presence of tuberculosis. We'll include a link to that as well. Steve, I'll see you on front. Nope, this isn't Vlogbrothers. Soon. I'll see you soon, Steve. Felt weird without hearing of Steve's or Khosgozad sound, I just said. That is what Khosgozad is to me. But still, was, was this the Crash Course guy? That's what who that was, I guess. The channel Crash Course. Yeah. But TB is like a big issue everybody knows of, right? I'm pretty sure TB is like one of those things that like people worry about if you have a cough. Like, what, what the fuck? Like you do have TB or something, people really worry about that because it's still an issue. I didn't know it was at that level issue. Where one in four level of thing. Like, damn. And when you realize it mostly in Asia, it's not just one in four. Like, if you exclude the places where there's not much of TB, it becomes even the higher number, right? So, just in regions like Asia, what is it like now? Like, one in three or something? Well, th that's insane. But yeah, right. Well, that was this disease deadlier than the plague. Yeah, by Charles in a nutshell. There are many diseases that's like slow acting. You won't realize it. COVID alone was like a slap in the face, right? Because it was relatively slow enough for our attention problem, right? Like it took a week to, I guess, develop and it like took another week to get noticed. It took like somewhere like two weeks. And that was like long enough. People like, okay, I don't have COVID. Apparently they did and just spread it before it spread it throughout the world and everybody like locked down and all that shit. So just two weeks was like that that much for us. Imagine slow shit like this, right? So yeah, I don't know. We need better screening, right? Like how to detect things for future pandemics and things. And yeah, I guess in future this is like this will get lower and lower because of things like CRISPR. Basically, we will be able to like augment our immune system like added certain things that specifically attack things that we want like how the, how the tb had this protective shield so we could develop something that attacks that something like that is in play right now last i checked that's where they're like trying to do like augmenting immune system is it at play right now right i don't know how advanced they are in that research but that's where it's going i guess all right well if you like my next one don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you next time